welcome to the virtual edition of the Nomad Talks. My name is Emily and I'm the co-founder of Nomad Junkies. If you don't know my story, I've been traveling to 67 countries in the last eight years. And today I'm going to share with you one of the best kept secrets to do the same. And I'm not going to do it alone to talk about how to live and work abroad after the pandemic. Let's welcome a couple who also traveled around the world, Nash and Vanessa from Moncton. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hey guys, how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> great, great, I'm great. So you guys are from Moncton, New Brunswick, and you are right now in Germany, right? Yep. Exactly, in Berlin. You're in Berlin. Okay, great, great. So I'm so excited to have you here uh, in this live event. To share your story, your story is definitely inspiring, and I'm really glad that we can share it with a lot of people. So um, let's start from the beginning, a few years back. What inspired you to start traveling, and how did you catch the travel bug? Uh, for us, um, essentially, it started uh, four years ago. Um, we both finished school. Um, we moved in together, and... Um, Essentially, yeah, we bought a house in Canada and we we're just doing what everyone around us was doing. Um, and then essentially when we started our careers, we both um, found a job, um, entry level, um, we were working full time. And the rule, which most of you guys might may know, is um, a roughly 10 days or two weeks vacations per year, um, as most Canadians have. And um, We wanted to travel the world, but in two weeks, we just couldn't figure out how to do it. Um, so the first year, uh, did our hours, and then we booked our first flights to Cuba, um, to Havana, and um, um, to the uh, resorts as well. And uh, that's where we caught the travel bug. We did five days there, and once we came back, we just couldn't stop talking about travel. Yeah because we knew we didn't want to just do the resorts. We wanted to visit a bit more. Um, so we had to figure out how we were going to do that with only two weeks vacation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then from that point on, we just couldn't get our minds off of it. So we <laughs> had to make the big decision of if we don't want to stay and work and only have two weeks vacation a year, we have to maybe let everything go and leave um, completely uh so that's what we did <laughs> we quit our jobs we sold our cars uh we gave away our stuff and we put our house for rent and we booked one-way tickets mm -hmm. to europe and it started traveling our first flight was to belgium we had been saving up money for roughly uh six months or so we kept the secret from our Uh, co-workers, our friends, <laughs> and even some of our family members. And then um, the first flight was to Belgium because it was the cheapest ticket um, from Montreal to Brussels uh, with a budget airline. Um, and at that point on, we had no plans. Um, <laughs> we just said, let's go right and we'll figure it out. Um, we knew other people did it. We didn't know exactly how. We searched up how to make money while traveling, how to afford to travel full time. And we just couldn't figure it out, but we said, we'll figure it out on the road. Um, so our first stop, uh, we did um, Germany. Germany. He had um, family I had Germany. family there, so we started there. Kind of um, saved up the money since we could rely on them for like accommodation and, and driving around, so that was nice. Exactly, we were super cheap on food. We just you know ate sandwich, the basics. <laughs> Um, from there, we visited Amsterdam in Netherlands. Again, uh, with a friend. So that was yeah, with a friend. <laughs> um, we stayed in a hostel, made some friends there. Um, then from that point on... We, we, we didn't want to stay in Europe because we knew it was too expensive because of the, the currency. So we exactly. actually took a one-way flight to Thailand. Uh, so we ended up in Bangkok. Again, stayed at hostels. We had no idea what we were doing we we barely searched anything about like thailand so when we got there we didn't even have a hotel or anything to give the, to the taxi driver so we just told him like bring us to kosan road because we knew that's one of the main streets and we just 
out there and just look for a place. So yeah. And the reason for Thailand is essentially we got there around November or October, and we were cold, um, just like most Canadians, or not most, but some Canadians <laughs> uh, were not that big fans of uh, the winter. the winter months. So <laughs> Thailand was a hot destination, and. Um, we got there, settled in the first night. Our hostel was super cheap, something like ten, 10 Canadian it. dollars at night. Um, uh, we just went on hostelworld.com and then had a bunch of choices there. Um, and from that point on, there's one night I met a guy from Alberta in a hostel. And um, he was essentially telling us about um, how him and his girlfriend made a bunch of money in Australia. And um, he said, essentially, it's super easy. You just sign up online and then you just can go to Australia right away. And from that point, you'll make a bunch of money and you'll be able to keep traveling for much longer. So that seemed appealing to us. And then it must have been at two in the morning. We went online, uh, <laughs> applied on the website, on the government website, and then it took maybe... I think it took like 24 hours and we got an answer. Yep. Um, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It took around 24, 24 to 48 hours. hours. We got an answer saying that we got the visa. The visa was approved. And at that point, we still wanted to visit Thailand. We still had money saved up. <laughs> so we uh, went to the islands, again, had a bunch of adventures there, met a bunch of people, great memories. Um, and before going to Australia, we actually stopped to visit someone in, in Bali. Yeah, so we visited Indonesia. Just a quick stop. And then we ended up in Sydney, Australia, uh, and we started our visa. Um, I have to admit that we did have a hard time finding work at first, so it wasn't always easy. Uh, we had no idea what we were doing. Um, we weren't used to hospitality jobs, so that was quite different, um, but it was still just amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we traveled around Australia. We did all of the East Coast. Um, we Yeah, we did uh, odd jobs. We met a, a lot of amazing people, friendships. And from that point on, um, with the hostels that we did stay at, we started meeting a lot of people that were also on working holiday visa like ourselves. And then that's what helped us finding jobs yeah. because uh, it was a community. Um, everyone would meet up at hostels and tell each other where the next job was. Yeah. So we would just tell our friends essentially where um, to go and then they would tell us where to apply. And mm -hmm. that's how we found our first job as... Bartender bartenders and tree planter and tree Both planter of it was yeah with other so uh, she was <laughs> bartending and i was bartending a bit but did also tree planting um I, uh, they told me apparently tree planting is a canadian thing um <laughs> so that's why they hired me and then i knew nothing about it but it was quite <laughs> the experience um yeah. and from that point on the experiences were amazing um with tree planting they would fly me out to uh, from Brisbane to Sydney, all over Australia, just to plant some trees. Um, bartending, uh, we met some awesome friends that we're still friends today. We meet up all the time. And um, um, yeah, from that point on, the Australian experience was experience. It was amazing. Uh, kangaroos, yeah. uh, the beaches, <laughs> um, living by the ocean was an living experience. In a van yeah. first time too. Living in a van. We hitchhiked. Yeah. We hitchhiked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good times. Uh, and then um, that's at that point. Our year was up. Our, yeah, it was a one year. And you can renew for another year. Usually but you have to do three months of uh, farm work, which we hadn't done. Um, and we didn't take the chance to try and apply. Um, so instead, we tried Austria, New Zealand. Yep, it was right there. A lot of people were doing it. And we just kind of followed the wave. And it, it turned out exactly like we wanted. Uh, one answer we're in the country and then bam, people go to New Zealand. So from there, we just went to New Zealand. It was just natural. Um, the process for that was also easy, also easy even easier. Um, super well-constructed website yeah. within minutes. Um, you're all set up and uh, all the information is there. Um, Canadians get approved fairly easily. Um, we also got our answer within hours, if not days. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, off to New Zealand. to Auckland. Auckland, yeah. Yeah. And uh, from that point, we 
purchased our, our van. So we lived in a van, it was for six months and we drove around, we visited basically all of New Zealand um, and did farm work in between. Did a bunch of hikes, uh, amazing, again, amazing beaches, uh, amazing experiences, amazing people. So that, that was fun too. If you um, look at the YouTube videos, you'll see New Zealand is mostly people doing the van life experience. Um, it's uh, the jobs are not the greatest, but super easy to start and stop and make quick money fairly fast. Um, we did kiwi thinning. We picked watermelons, corn, just melons. or just melons, berries, berries yeah, blackberries, blueberries, apples, apples <laughs> yeah. essentially all of them. Um, and that would just give us enough money or to, even to more to, to move to the <laughs> next place, meet some new friends, party together, and then in between do some hikes. We did some skydiving. Um, we went on the biggest um, swing in the world. Mm -hmm. um, all kinds of amazing stuff. New Zealand was an amazing country too. We only stayed six months. We were able to stay. I think you're able to stay either 12 months or 24 months. Um, but we only stayed six since we lived in a van and we just kind of got over it at some point and decided to go back to Canada, but we still weren't ready to go back home. So we went to, uh, the West coast, uh, and, um, stayed in Banff and worked a bit in Banff and Jasper, uh, visited there again, met awesome people, did a bunch of hikes, uh, great experience. Um, and then we went back home to work and save up, but at that point we knew that we didn't want to live in Canada, at least not now. So we had to figure out what we were going to do next. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we saved up again in Canada and then we looked into the next working visas that we could do. Um, and the obviously the easiest one was either France or um, the UK because French and English easier for us. Um, so we picked the UK. That visa was a bit more complicated and way more expensive, but still doable. Um, it took a bit more time. And then finally we got it. And in 2020, uh, beginning of 2020, we moved to London. Uh, everything went well, <laughs> settled down, got jobs. Everything was fine, but then COVID happened. So we lost our jobs, too expensive to live in London. Um, at least we did have time to visit a bit before the pandemic, so it was nice. Uh, and then from that point on, we ended up back where we started. We ended up back in Germany with his family. <laughs> and so, yeah. Back to square one and then from that point on, we were debating COVID times, like, should we, um, like, we should kind of define where we want to live for good, what we want to do um, for, as a career and stuff, because the working holiday obviously brought us a bunch of different experiences. And then we had a better idea of one, where we wanted to live and just what we wanted to do in life. Um, and for that point on, um, we moved to Berlin and essentially now we got the visa. We got the visa. Yeah. Took a, in it, Germany. Took, it wasn't complicated, but it took a long time. And also the reason Germany wasn't our first pick is also because of the language. The language. Yeah. Um, so that was a bit of a barrier, but once you get it and once you're here, it's especially mm -hmm. in Berlin, it's so much easier because there's mm -hmm. so much English. Exactly. So. We weren't in Berlin when we applied for the visas. That's why it was also a little more difficult. Mm -hmm. But the community of English speakers in Berlin is yeah. uh, crazy, right? So there's a lot of them. And then, um, yeah, we both got jobs as soon as we arrived. And now we're settled, settled <laughs> and uh, living in Berlin. Yeah, Berlin is such an international city. So it's really a good place to to uh, live or to do a working holiday visa. For those watching, I'm just gonna uh, backtrack a little to explain. Um, so if you are Canadian between the ages of 18 to 35, um, you are allowed, <laughs> you, you're advised, strongly advised to um, look at the working holiday visa. Um, it's a, with the International Experience Canada, it's actually a program of the government of Canada that have agreement with a lot of countries, more than 30 countries, where you can apply for a period of like going there to work and live between 20, uh, 12 to 24 months. Um, so the first step for those watching like, oh, I'm really interested, uh, you, your story is really inspiring, uh, where do I start? So the first step is to choose a destination. So you can shop <laughs> your destination on the International Experience website. I'm gonna read the destination. So in Oceania, uh, you have Australia and New Zealand, as Nash and Vanessa just, did, just talk about it and did. 
in South America, you have uh, Chile and uh, Costa Rica. In Asia, you have Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan. And in Europe, if you're interested by Europe, oh my God, you have so much uh, choices, so many. You have uh, Austria, Belgium, Croatia, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, France, Germany, Greece. You have ha Ireland, Italy, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Portugal, San Marino, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, and United Kingdom, as uh, you guys did. So it's, it's, seriously, it's an amazing way to travel. I also did it myself. I spent a year in New Zealand. Um, it was a great experience, and I, I really wish that I knew uh, about this program way earlier in my life. You know, I wish I was like 18 and someone will tell me because it's great to use as much as possible between the ages of 18 to 35. How old are you guys are actually when you start doing your visa and now? Um, we're 27 yeah. and started when we were 23. Oh, that's the best. You have so much more time to do so many. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, so it's really a great program. Um, for those watching, I will put the link below in the comments where you can uh, start getting information about the cost, the requirement, and all these amazing countries. Because we are, I'm sure you will agree, we're really lucky as Canadians to have that many options to go around the world and live and work. For sure, for sure. That's good. Um, let's talk about the motivation and the meaning of traveling and working abroad. Why would you recommend uh, to a, a Canadian from 18 to 35 to do a working holiday visa? I guess like it's really, there's just so many experiences that you will not be able to do or experience if you stay at home and you just do the nine to five job um, and kind of stay with the people that, that you know and you stay in your comfort zone. When you decide to travel, you, you just open up so many doors and you change as a person, you change your perspective um, and everything that you believe in, it just it changed and I don't know, it's just, it's an amazing experience. So as, as much as I, like I was, I remember when I was around 17 or 18, my cousin had mentioned the working holiday visa about Australia and I really wasn't ready at the time. I was, I had anxiety. I just, I couldn't picture myself doing it, especially not alone. And again, it was the whole society thing of, you know, getting a job, going to university, building a family, everything. So I understand the stress that people might feel, um, especially if you're alone. Um, but to take that leap and to go out of your comfort zone, and once you're out of it and you experience it, then it's just so much easier and you will crave that feeling of being outside of your comfort zone. So, yeah. That's, that's interesting because we can dig into um, uh, probably the top three reasons why young people don't travel. So they're, like the main reason is uh, money, obviously, it's always a topic, and then career and fear. So um, let's focus on money first. What would you say to someone that believes that you need to be rich to travel? <laughs> Not rich. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so um, like, I would say... Um, the most money we were able to save up with, to save up was actually during a working holiday um, in Australia. Um, and some things that people don't take that much in consideration is that the um, exchange of currencies and the minimum wage in different countries vary. Mm -hmm. um, so in Australia, we were making 20 plus dollars per hour um, and one dollar is about the same as in Canada. So often you're able to make more money in a foreign country that you can make on your own. Mm -hmm. um, so that's as far as just a living standard. But um, also when you're just motivated to travel and that's the only thing you really want to do, the money will, will you'll find, yeah, it will come and yeah. you will find it for sure. And you, you end up at, at being a bit less materialistic too. So you'll kind of find out what's actually important to you and what you need to, to keep traveling. Um, so yeah, so you won't have as much of the same expenses as you, as you have back home because your priority will be different. And as far as career, um, I would argue that um, Canada doesn't have that big cities. Therefore, most careers um, can even get better and you'll have more opportunities if you uh, branch out to different cities around the world. And even when you come back to Canada, if that's your goal, um, there, it also opens many doors because 
trust me, when we went back, every resume, every place we applied, that was the first question. Yeah, interesting. Uh, why were you in Australia and then New Zealand and then all these different countries? Uh, it's a conversation starter and it just gives you a better opportunities to get a better job. Sometimes like the work experience or the university degree is great to have on a resume, but having the soft skills and life experience, you can also kind of bring in at an interview. So it kind of helps to to have like big life stories and kind of transfer those skills to what it can, like how it can be applied to the job you're applying for. It works too. Like, you know, people are scared a lot of the time. And I do understand I had fear before I started traveling. Yeah, I, I remember when I was going for one year in New Zealand, like I was totally freaking out. Because, you know, it's so far and it's such the unknown. And um, how did you deal with it? What can you give as advice to someone who's like, I really want to do it. Okay, I'm going to be able to make money. Because you, you make money when you, with the working holiday visa, you make money. So your travel is going to be free. You have to start with a little. And this, okay, your career is resolved. You're going to have extra points, extra story to tell in your interview. Mm -hmm. So now the only thing that is stopping you is fear. So... What, what message, what can you give as an advice someone who's like, I'm still really scared to do it? Um, get information. Um, that reduces fear quite a lot. Um, yeah. If we knew today what we knew, uh, what, well, like when we started, we definitely wouldn't have been as scared because, um, yeah, so like I would just say there's quite a lot of communities out there just like this one. You can always reach out to any of us. Mm -hmm. And there's a, thousands of Canadians mm -hmm. and people all around the world that do the working holiday visa. Mm -hmm. um, Canada is actually like one of the countries that have the least holiday or working holiday visa makers. Therefore, when you arrive in Australia or in France and UK, um, it's quite common to say um, to meet someone from Spain or for, from Portugal that will tell you like, oh, yeah, me and all my friends are doing this together. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we're just one of the rare ones that uh, don't, that don't do it as, much. as often. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's why we're doing these li live events to actually like encourage people to use these programs. They're so amazing. Mm -hmm. It's really like a free pass to travel around the world, mm -hmm. make money legally. So I'm glad that you guys are here. And um, it, we're going to take uh, three questions from the people watching. But before, do you have any other advice you would like to give? Um, I would just say um, make a list. Um, definitely be um, specific on what you want to achieve and uh, give yourself a timeline. Um, it's yeah, easy yeah. to say, <laughs> um, I want to travel the world. But the years go by, um, as we've seen this year, COVID, everyone's stuck inside for a full year. And that yeah. dream of yours of being able to travel is just one year less, right? So um, yeah. pushing it to later, put an actual date and uh, yeah. start planning for your dream. That's actually the moment that if you have questions for Nash and Vanessa about the working holiday visa in general or specific to any of their destination they did, so Australia, New Zealand, uh, Germany, United Kingdom. Just put them in the comment below and we're going to answer uh, straight away. <laughs> so, okay, so let's pick one. Um, okay, that's an interesting, a classic, not a classic, but it's obviously a fair question. Which country would you recommend to make the most money? <laughs> Australia. Yeah, um, Australia. Australia is quite um, a lucrative country. Yeah. However, uh, uh, New Zealand is also raising their minimum wage quite a bit. So we've heard a lot of travelers say that that's a, quite a good destination. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's pick another question. Um, okay, what was your best and worst work experience abroad? <laughs> Some of the farm work uh, sometimes was the... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> that <was very> challenging. <laughs> yeah. Challenging. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I have to admit that some days, some days I would actually just take a week and just do farm work because sometimes the work is just very repetitive and you don't have to think compared yeah. to the jobs that we do now. So sometimes it can be nice, but yeah, very challenging. Um, and bartending, I find, uh, yeah. I guess maybe the place that I was, but bartending sometimes was also a bit. Exactly. Um, <laughs> we don't, we all speak English, but everyone has different accents. And uh, <laughs> when you work at a bar in Australia, you uh, notice the differences. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I will pick this one. Uh, how is it to travel and work together as a couple 24-7? How to not kill each other? <laughs> <laughs> we have our days. No. Yeah, um, we do. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you do lose your space, especially when you live in a van. Sometimes someone just needs to go for a walk. Um, <laughs> somehow we managed it quite well. Um, is is it going to test your relationship? Yes. Definitely. Is it every relationship that's going to survive? No, we've seen it. We've seen some couples that did not survive traveling um, together. But I think it's all it's all communication and giving each other space and just understanding. We obviously have uh, different perspectives. We have different personalities. We're just we're actually completely different. Um, so we experience things differently. So it's it's nice, yeah, to communicate. I would say also that not only it's a couple's experience, but it always is an individual experience as well. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure to make your own friends, or you know, take some time to actually visit people on your own, mm -hmm. uh, and then just come back together and just talk about it and stuff. So definitely giving each other space at all times to just fully grasp the experience yeah. definitely mm -hmm. helps. And grow uh, as a person and not just as a couple. We. Uh, um we just got married or we just got engaged uh, a few months ago so it worked for us <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> congratulations congratulations yep. uh, so uh thank you so much your your story is really inspiring uh if you uh, guys watching have uh, more questions that we did not answer today write it down in the comments below here and we'll make sure to answer to every one of you We're also going to have someone from International Experience Canada that can answer any uh, specific question about the working holiday visa. And um, if, you are, if you want to start shopping <laughs> your new international uh, experience, um, you can visit the International Experience Canada website to get all the de detail about working and traveling abroad as Canadian. And uh, uh, um, we also have other live events uh, that are talking about specific destinations, like to do the working holiday visa in Australia, in Italy, in Ireland, in Taiwan. So I'm going to put the link as well below with other amazing guests as Naj and Vanessa that share their experience. Like you see, there is not a lot of Canadian doing it, but uh, we hope there are going to be more and more Canadian that are going to enjoy this way of uh, living and traveling around the world. And um, finally, uh, Naj and Vanessa, I wish you to continue explore the world together. And I know you will. I hope that our path will cross eventually and that we can meet up after COVID. And uh, <laughs> maybe uh, to finish, can you tell us where we can follow your adventure on social media? Because you guys have a lot of really great content around the world. So where can we follow you? Thank you. Uh, mostly Instagram for now. Vanessa's uh, Van, V-A-N, Downing, D-O-W-N-I-N-G. Um, and mine is at I'm so nasty. <laughs> <laughs> great so we also put the links below and uh, if you guys have any other question you, you are in contact with Nash, Vanessa and I um, on this um, live video in the comments thank you so much and uh, have a great time in Berlin thank, thank you, you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. thank you <laughs>